How should you respond if you're accused of being defensive? Hi, welcome to today's little lesson and thank you so much for joining me. Have you ever been accused of being defensive? Well, I know uh, that I certainly have and I've consequently pondered what would be the best way to respond to that accusation because at the time, I didn't have much of a response. And let me preface all this by saying that uh, can we all agree that bad people look for good people to take advantage of, <laughs> right? You know, when you're a sincere, sympathetic, kind-hearted person, um, People with less than pure motives look for those kinds of people to take advantage of because they're likely to be trusting and even gullible. And, you know, so, so anyone who's been a trusting, kind, compassionate person eventually finds themselves being taken advantage of. Sure, it's absolutely inevitable because the world is full of people who have less than pure motives and who are very self-centered and their whole goal is to get what they can get for themselves. They're all about themselves. So you'll find yourself then eventually in conflict and nice people hate conflict, you know, because they, they just wanna, you know, get along. They're, they're, they love serving others. They love loving others. And when it suddenly dawns on them that they're being taken advantage of or misused or abused in some way, shape, or form, um, then, then, you know, that's when, you know, conflict, if it hasn't already started, is going to escalate because you're, that good person, that sincere person, values the relationship and they're going to try to work it out and make it work. And they'll be conciliatory and understanding and, and listening and so forth to try to understand the perspective of the person with whom they are in conflict. Well, you know, people who are bad have excuses. <laughs> and um, they always try to deflect the blame away from themselves to the good person whom they're trying to take advantage of. So this is just... You know, this is the stuff of life. And sooner or later, you're probably going to be accused of being defensive. You know, because you are. <laughs> you're, they're making accusations against you. And you're defending yourself. They're misstating things. They're twisting the truth or they're misrepresenting the facts. And so you, at your own defense, say things that are defensive. And then they come up with a line, well, you're so defensive. Well, that's a form of what is known as gaslighting. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard that terminology before, gaslighting. It uh, is derived from a play back in the 1930s, a British play uh, and that was adapted for a, a movie back in the 1940s, I think by the title Gaslighting. And there was a bad guy and there was a good guy. The good guy was a woman. And the bad guy and the bad guy and the good guy, the bad man and the good woman were married. And he, he, he was selfish. He really didn't care about her. And he was trying to take advantage of her. And so he had this uh, plot to try to make her doubt her perceptions, to, to, to drive her insane, and then to ultimately have her committed to an insane asylum. <laughs> and he did that in part by turning down the, 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 the gaslights. But that was back in the days, you know, uh, of... of uh, when people lit their homes through through gas and so forth. And so he'd turn them down and his wife would say, it seems like the, the, the gas, the lights are dimmer than they were before. And he goes, no, they're not. They're just as bright as they've ever been. It's, something's wrong with you. You're the problem. 
Your perceptions are wrong. And he had other means and methods, you know, to ultimately, you know, drive her insane because she doubted herself and he did it by psychologically manipulating her. Well, when someone accuses you of being defensive, that's a form of gaslighting because they're simply saying to you, well, there's, the problem is you. That's the problem. You're, see, you're defensive, but the truth is all you're doing is responding to accusations that are made against you and you don't agree with them, you don't believe them. Now, let me, let me back up just one second. We ought to be humble and listen carefully and weigh accusations that are made against us and maybe even seek counsel to, to see if there's an agreement outside counsel, someone who's a third party who be, you know, has nothing to gain or lose. So, so I'm not saying that, you know, um, you, you should defend yourself under every circumstance. If you're guilty, you should say, I'm guilty. You're right. I was wrong. Forgive me. Right? But gaslighting is when your opponent, it's, it's a technique people use when they have nothing substantive to actually accuse you of any longer. And so now they're resorting to attacking you, an ad hominem attack. There's something wrong with you. you you're, you're defensive. Well, you know, that has no substance at all as an argument because you're, you're, you're simply responding, counteracting their lies, their misperceptions with truth. Again, if you have the truth on your side, if you have the facts on your side. So the person who has to resort to such an argument, you know, you're being defensive, they've lost the argument. And that might be an appropriate thing to say to them right there. Well, you know, that's not a substantive argument whatsoever. That's a, you're, make, you're making an accusation and it's just adding to the accusations you made, but there's no substance to it whatsoever. Of course I'm defending myself. You're accusing me. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know, now some people will even say, I had a guy, a gaslighter do this to me. And he said, well, Jesus never defended himself. Well, that's nonsense. You know, that's a lie. Jesus defended himself many, many, many times. <laughs> read the Bible, read the gospels. I was just reading in my private devotions here, which, which kind of prompted me to, to do this little lesson, uh, the book of Job. And what is Job but a book in which Job defends himself against the accusations of three, actually four in the end, people who are, you know, demanding that he confess his sin and throughout all of it, he maintains his innocence. And near the end, he has the boldness to even cite specific examples of how, what they've accused him of, he's not guilty of it, you know. So is it wrong to defend yourself? Well, Job the man whom God considered to be the most righteous person on the face of the earth, defended himself in a lengthy discourse. I've had people say to me, oh, but you, you know, you've gone on for so long in your defense. Is there a rule against that? You know, you, you respond to accusations. If they give 10 accusations, you give 10 responses. Pretty simple. So Job is a long book. Job spent a lot of time defending himself and and because he knew the truth. He knew that he was not the flagrant sinner that his friends were saying that he was. Okay? And people who are godly, they defend their reputation because their reputation means a lot to them. And the Bible says that. A good reputation is to be desired above silver and gold. You know, bad people really don't care about their reputation. All they care about is themselves. All right, so to answer the question that I posed the, at the beginning of this little lesson, how should you respond when someone accuses you of being defensive? You can just say, that there's no substance to that whatsoever. Of course I'm defending myself. You're accusing me wrongly. If that's your best argument, I 
guess the argument's over <laughs> because you just lost. Hey, if you've never been to davidservant.org, we've got just a wealth of biblical teaching there in the form of writings, articles, books, and so forth. It's all free. Check it out and I uh, hope it'll be a blessing to you. Until next time, may the Lord bless you.